Okay, so let's go through the labs on FireNet. Um, so this is the first lab. There are two labs on FireNet. So it says BU1 and BU2, if you remember, we're able to communicate with each other as of Friday end of business. However, the network team received another complaint that uh, from BU1 that BU2 mobile app was no longer working. So the first thing we could do is we can go, sorry, my apologies, I didn't mean to go here. Uh, we can actually go here and now we can see that the pings were actually working. And now if I ping, uh, again, I'm on BU1 front end, I'm trying to ping BU2, it is no longer pingable, which is interesting. So we can go to Copilot and try to assess what's going on. First thing I can go to look at gateways and check if there is any change on the routing table. So here on spoke one, again, I am here. I should look for 10.1.2.1.2 to check if there is any change on the routing side of the, of the thing. So uh, I can directly find 10.1.2.1.2, which means everything is looking good. And if I go back to um, spoke two and look at the gateway routes, I can also find the 10.1.2.1.1.0, which means from a routing perspective, nothing seems to be altered. So another thing I can do is I can go to the topology and I can leverage the gateway um, tools. So I can, this is the spoke, this is where the B1 front end lives. And I can go and say, you know what? I want to try gateway diagnostics and I want to try to ping 10.1.2.1.2.40. So I'm trying to ping, not from the instance, I'm trying to ping from that spoke gateway. I'm trying to ping the this instance here. And I just give it a few seconds. And I can see that there is a 100% packet loss. Packets have been transmitted, but nothing has been received. Okay, this seems interesting. So what if I go to, what if I go to the transit and I try to do the same? Okay, now I am on that, transit here, and I want to try to ping both of these instances. So let me start with the same one I was pinging, 212.40, and try to ping it. And this works. Oh, that's interesting. So this transit gateway is able to get to this instance, and I want to see if it's able to get to the BU1 front end. BU1 front end, I can stop the ping and look at this IP. It is 10.1. 211.45, so I can go and uh, plug it here and check if the ping will work. Okay, so the ping actually works to both of them. However, it does so as an analysis, my apologies, I can say clearly that the ping from here to uh, the BU2 app does not work, and the ping from here. Uh, however, the ping from the transit works for both of these. This makes me suspect FireNet because what generally would happen is if this VPC or this VPC is inspected, then this transit will need to redirect the packet to the firewall. So let's first go to the copilot and try to see if there is anything about FireNet that seems to be interesting. The first thing that I can clearly see is if I look at this view, this firewall, is showing that the instance is down. So the firewall seems down. This is this is one part of the um, of the question. The other thing is obviously one of these spokes or both of them, this is the AWS, so I can narrow it down. This is the AWS and both of them have inspection on, which means what is happening is the packet is coming from the spoke to the transit. The transit says, I have to send this to inspect it. But then the firewall is, is down and thus the there is no, the traffic is not being, um, it's not actually working. So one thing I could do, which is really interesting, I can go and try to use this exclude from inspection. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put an IP address of any of the workloads and any traffic pertaining, and this is, by the way, again, to 11.45 is the IP address of the B1 front end. And 
what I can now, if I exclude it from inspection, what should happen is the ping will work. Because now I told the transit, please do not send that traffic to the firewall. And if I, if I want to prove it again, I will remove it and save. And you will see that the ping actually worked. The, the ping actually stopped working. Again, if I make it 10.1 to 11.45 and I do a save, you will see that the ping actually goes back to work which obviously means that the traffic needs to be sent to the firewall, but the firewall is down. This is why the packet is being dropped. And again, we looked at the FireNet gateways and we directly saw that the firewall is actually down. Even if you look at the firewall, you're able to see it as the status is actually down. So what I've done behind the scenes is I've went to that 40 gate firewall because there is an interface by which the transit is probing the firewall, it's sending keep alives. And whenever those keep alives fail, this is how we detect that the uh, actual firewall is down. Okay, so this is, this is how we um, figure out that the firewall is down. So what I've done behind the scenes, I've went to this firewall, I chose the LAN interface, and I actually put it down. So you're going to see that it is disabled. So now, uh, first, let me make sure that I is the ping. Oh, sorry. I'm not looking at the right screen. So here, did I remove the, did I remove the exclusion? Let me remove it just to make sure. So now the ping should be, the ping should stop. Okay, so the ping should no longer work. And now what I'm going to do to the FortiGate is I'm going to enable that interface and give it a few seconds and keep looking at the ping. Okay, now you can see clearly that the ping is actually working. Let me, um, okay, and this concludes the lab number three. So now we are at lab number four. And again, uh, B1 and B2 were able to communicate with each other. As you remember, we have solved the interface issue in lab three. However, we still received another complaint from BU1 front-end team that the BU2 mobile app was no longer reachable. So um, again, the first thing we do, as always, is we go and ping. And we can see that the problem is actually there. So, okay. This time we go to FireNet, we can see the firewall is looking good. And this seems interesting. Um, however, the packets are not actually making it. Again, we can always go and look at um, the gateways. I mean, the first thing I would always go and just check that the routing tables are looking good. If I see a 10.1.2.1.2 is okay, and I need to go and generally do it on the other spoke. And if I see a 10.1.2.1.1, that generally proves that from a routing perspective, we are looking good. So this is one thing. Then the question becomes is, can I figure out what is happening for that particular flow? So if I go and clear the screen and say, I have a source address, which is 45, if you remember, I'm going to apply and then start zooming in. I'm interested in the in the in the traffic that goes to 21212.40. Again, this is a ping traffic. That's why you're not going to see source port and destination ports. And 
I am interested to see, uh, I mean, I can change this flow exporter to gateway. I'm interested to see, I'm suspecting this is FireNet. So I'm, I need to look at it from the transit perspective. So this is the source, this destination. I'm, we can, because I received three variations of the same packet, I'm interested to see what the transit actually did to it. So this is my, my uh, I would say, a bit more advanced um, logic. And obviously, I can make ands and ors and, and change that. I can save that. Okay, this is interesting to note. So I can say from uh, front end to mobile app. And save. So this is the front end to the uh, mobile app. And uh, I can go and check the records. And I am looking at them in a descending order. Okay, so it's going to take some time. Um, let me just uh, wait for some more traffic. And then let's look at this together. Well, now, if I look at the last packet, because we did a few changes, which is on 11.29, I can see that the packet came on the tunnel, went over Ethernet 2. Ethernet 2 is the interface that connects to the firewall. So what this is showing is the packet actually went to the firewall, but it never came back. Okay, so again, back to the diagram, what is happening is we are, let me just annotate. So the packet came to the, came to the transit. The transit sent it to the firewall, but the firewall never sent the packet back to the transit, which is supposed to happen, which seems interesting. So let's look at some of the things we have at our disposal. One thing we can look at is there is a, There is under FireNet, if I click on the firewall, there is a, it shows me the current routing table of that 40 gate. And that routing table has 172.16. This is pointing to the transit and it has 192.168. But what is the destination that I am pinging now? I am pinging 10. So the 40 gate, even if it has the right policy, it does not have the route for the 10 network and thus cannot send the packet back to the transit and the packet will actually be dropped at the firewall. So what I'm going to do, I, the ping is already initiated. I'm going to tell it to sync the routes to the firewall and see, you can automatically see that the ping actually works. And now you see a third route being added, and we have a comment next to it of Aviatrix vendor integration. So what I have done behind the scenes is I've went to that 40 gate and I deleted the route. So if I go now and refresh the page, you will see the third route being added, having the comment Aviatrix vendor integration so that the firewall administrator just doesn't go and delete the route without knowing that it came from Aviatrix. Okay, so it's really interesting that we're able to look at flow IQ first to prove that the packet actually went to the firewall. And by the way, I mean, I can go even to the records. Um, sorry, if did I need to apply and I can go to the records and now you are starting to see the packets. I mean, if you see the, uh, I mean, we're looking at 11.29. Let me sort by descending. Uh, the 11.29 was only a one, a one-sided thing. In a few seconds, you will start seeing uh, the packets coming back from the firewall, right? So these two requests only show the, the if you see the previous requests, the ones that worked, where we sent the packet to the firewall and the firewall sent it back to us. This is the normal behavior. In our behavior, we're getting the packet over a tunnel, remember, because this interface is a tunnel. We're sending it to the firewall, but we're never coming. We're not getting. Uh, we're not getting back from the firewall, which is the result of that route being missing. So all of this can be done uh, in a very interesting way. The visibility is just amazing. And if you go to topology, another thing I can show you 
is if you go to the transit, click on it and go to gateway diagnostics, you can do a packet capture. And I'm gonna just make sure I'm having the ping still working. And you can choose Ethernet 2. Ethernet 2 is the interface that connects to the firewall. And I make it, I can make it a very short packet capture. Just giving it a bit more time, I'm able to also download a PCAP file of the packets, and I can even easily see 10.1.1, for example, uh, then that one dot two one one dot forty five. I can easily um, again see it, or I can even open the PCAP and have a look at uh, that particular traffic. This is the ICMPs that we're sending. So you are able to send those to your firewall administrator uh, to prove that this packet actually went to the firewall. So this marks the end of lab number four.